Maryland women's soccer has not had quite the season it hoped for, just surpassing the halfway mark of the Big Ten regular season. We will take a look into the Terp season thus far, coming up on the Left Bench in Focus. We're almost there, and I think that once again, they, we're, we're getting opportunities to continue to, to get better, and we gotta continue to use that going forward. Welcome in everyone to the Left Bench in Focus, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Ben Wolf, alongside Andrew McBride, and Andrew, it feels so good to be behind the desk with you for the first time for our first In Focus show of the year. Yeah, Ben, I'm super excited about it, so let's just get right into it and go all in on this Maryland women's soccer program. Maryland came into Saturday's matchup looking to secure its first win over Rutgers for the first time since 2019, but a penalty kick with six minutes left to play claimed the Scarlet Knights victorious. Maryland could not get its offense going in the first half, being outshot by Rutgers 10-1. In the second half, the Terps began to find their legs, creating scoring opportunities with four shots. Maryland's golden chance to score was in the final 20 minutes of the game, from a shot by Hannah Shapiro, who had a clear lane to the net, but her shot sailed over the crossbar. Goalkeeper Liz Beardsley came, kept the Terps in the game with numerous clutch saves, and then Catherine DeRosa drew a foul in the box, setting up a penalty kick for Rutgers' Kylie Daigle. Daigle converted on the penalty kick to take the 1-0 win for Rutgers. Here's what head coach Megan Ryan Nenzer had to say after the game. Well, I thought we made some adjustments in the second half, and I thought we were able to put higher pressure on them in the second half. Um, but that's, that's the fight that I knew that we could have, and I'm really proud of how they came and they rallied around, whether it was their teammates, I felt like they rallied around me a little bit as well, along with Kenny, so I'm really proud of what they did today. Nemzer was emotional, but for all the right reasons, after a team's loss to Rutgers. And it wasn't just about the game itself. Nemzer spent 14 years in the Rutgers coaching staff after graduating from the school. She left her alma mater in 2021 after 18 years in New Brunswick. And she spent the final eight years at Rutgers as the associate head coach. Nemzer has a connection with those in Scarlet and Black, as she wore them proudly when she played as a defender. She even had the chance to coach some of the girls who Maryland faced on the field. Here is Nems reflecting on the first chapter of her career. That, that was about 18 years of my life. I spent more time there than I did here, you know, but I'm so happy to be here. This is, this is my home now, um, and I love my team, and I love what they did. Um, it was weird to see some of the girls that I've coached since they were like 12 years old um, on that field, but it was nice to you know, see them after the game and the welcome, uh, you know, how much they told me, how much they missed me and all that stuff. So it's good. It's good to see them. Ben. Living in New Jersey for 18 years is a struggle you, Nemzer, and I all have in common. You got that right, Andrew. And while Nemzer had an emotional game against her former team, Maryland now has to shift its focus to Nebraska. The Terps will head out to Lincoln to take on the Cornhuskers for the first time since 2021. Nebraska holds a commanding advantage in the series with a 5-0-1 record over Maryland. Nebraska currently sits at number five in the Big Ten standings, only two points behind Indiana, Wisconsin, and Michigan State tied for second. Nebraska has the most prolific offense in the Big Ten, averaging 2.9 goals per game, while Maryland sits at the bottom, averaging just over half a goal per game. Maryland has a huge task ahead of them and will have to be firing on all cylinders to escape with the win. You can watch Thursday night's matchup at 8 p.m. on the Big Ten Network. We're now excited to be joined by the women's soccer beat writer for Testudo Times, Jack Perry. Jack, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you all for having me. Um, so, Jack, the the Maryland offense has obviously struggled mightily throughout the Big Ten regular season, not notching a single goal throughout their first six games. What do you think this offense has to do to just find the back of the net? You know, keeping the ball in the attacking half is key. So the front line, which is filled mostly of underclassmen, has really struggled to gain a chemistry and keep possession in the attacking half, which has led for a lot of problems on the back end. So failing in your 1v1s and attacking has been a big thing for them. And also, it's just getting shots up. If you look at it at the end of the day, the Terps in this six-game stretch, they've only averaged 7.5 shots per game and only 2.3 shots on goal. And the lack of attempts, it makes teams want to back off and then push more numbers in the attacking half. So it's been a real problem, but that'll have to change in order for them to score. Yeah, and Jack, obviously Maryland has not won a Big Ten game all year, and teams like Penn State and Michigan State at the top of the leaderboard have handed them some pretty embarrassing losses. So how much of uh, Maryland's struggles this year can be attributed to talent in the Big Ten? 
Yeah, I think it's talent, but I think it's also chemistry. Look at a lot of these programs they've lost to. They have players that play four years with each other. They grow to know each other. Coach Nembers has only been at the program for two years. They started opening day this year with eight new players in their starting 11. So I think it's just the chemistry of these other teams in their attack and passing has just been too much for the back line to handle. Now looking at, ahead to the game against Nebraska, what improvements do you hope to see since uh, the Rutgers game? Well, you know, the back line has to be up to the task. They were able to withstand for about 84 minutes last game, but it wasn't enough. And the Nebraska front line has two players with the two most shots and shots on goal in the Big Ten, and Eleanor Dale and Sarah Weber. And Dale has the most goals in Division I women's soccer right now with 19. So the Terps back line has allowed 10 goals in their last three matches. They really got to step it up in order to get the win. Jack, like you said, it's only Nemser's second season as head coach, and but it's been a pretty, pretty lackluster season. You know, they had some success last year against conference teams, but what are the bright spots you see on this team that makes you believe that Nemser can take them to the next level in the future? For sure, it's the younger talent. I mean, if we're looking at underclassmen, they've arguably been the best players on the team this season. Freshman defender Kennedy Bell has, in my opinion, been the best player on the team a lot of energy from the back and she's been converted into more of an attacking role in recent weeks just because of how good of a player she is. They can't hold her back on defense. And then Ava Morales, she's a sophomore. She's been with Nemza these two years. She leads the team with three goals. So I think that the younger talent with Nemza working together really shows that she has the ability to develop players. But I think it's also the coach building a culture and having, having a mindset with this team that's like, we know we have to improve. That's what we're here for. You're not signing up to win the Big Ten in your first year if you're coming here. But I think if she lays the foundation, continues to show other recruits that she can improve them, she can make them better players at the collegiate level, then I think that success should come in the future. Got it. Well, Jack, thanks again for coming on, um, breaking down this team with us. No problem. You can follow along with all of Jack's coverage on X at Jack underscore JP underscore Perry and on TessutoTimes.com. Now stay right here because when we come back, we'll head over to Studio B to play a fun game of Who's That Turp. We'll also be joined by TSC's very own Kira Bruno to break down Maryland women's soccer season compared to past years. Don't go anywhere. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. There are so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Welcome back, everyone, to the Left Bench in Focus, brought to you by Terrapin Sports Central. I'm Ben Wolf. That's Andrew McBride. And, Andrew, we can't have an in-focus show without focusing on how the team has been in the past. Yep, that's right. So let's take it back to Maryland's 2022 campaign. Maryland definitely enjoyed more Big Ten success last season than they have so far this year. But it still took them a while to get rolling. The Terps started the season bland, with not one, not two, not three, but four straight one-to-one -one ties. The last came against Georgetown before the Terps picked up their first win against George Mason. Three games later, Nemser's squad made history. They opened up Big Ten play by taking down Michigan 1-0 off of Michaela Day's goal in the 69th minute. This gave the Terps their first win over the Wolverines in program history. But the fruits of this win were short-lived. The Terps would lose their next seven games. Maryland needed to find some momentum for the 2023 season in its last two games against Indiana and Purdue. And they took care of business in back-to-back -back games on the road finishing the season 4, 8, and 5. 
It was a season to forget in Nemza's first year, but the team still had some golden moments. Since we just broke down the 2022 record, we figured why not break it down some more and what this team looked like before entering the Big Ten. Kira Bruno is here to tell us more. Kira? Yeah, guys, this team has looked pretty different since entering the Big Ten in 2014. I'll start off with a blast from the past for you guys, Maryland women's soccer before 2014. It's been almost a decade since the Terps have switched over to the Big Ten from the ACC, and that time came as much more of a success story. Maryland in the ACC looked much different than Maryland in the Big Ten. The Terps had winning seasons, tournament appearances, and even some Sweet 16 ones. The 2012 senior class became the first ever program during their collegiate careers. Throughout the 2009 to 2011 seasons, Maryland had a winning record above 700. It almost seems crazy to think about, especially with where the Terps are at now. Ten years later, a new conference and a lot more changes along the way, things are bound to look pretty different. And when Ray Leone took over in 2016, he gave the team some of the best years they've had in the Big Ten. But in his last few seasons, the wins started to dwindle. The Terps saw improvement each year when Leone was at the helm. 2019 was Maryland's best season in the Big Ten, finishing 9-8-3, their first winning season since that senior season in 2012. The Terps also earned sixth place in the standings, qualifying them for their first ever Big Ten tournament. But after the success story that was 2019, Maryland dropped off. They finished 0-10-2 overall in 2020 and in 2021, 4-9-5. Leon's contract was up after that, and the athletic department decided not to extend it. It was time for something new. And that's when the new head coach, Megan Ryan Nemzer, came to town from Rutgers. It felt like a new era for this team, and that it was. Nemzer took a team that was 0-7-3 to 3-7 in conference play. Despite the Terps going 4-8-5 overall and finishing 11th in the Big Ten, it was a season the team hasn't seen in a long time. They won their first Big Ten game since 2019 against Michigan 1-0 in the conference opener. But still, Maryland's stats differed exponentially from its opponents. They recorded 16 goals, but their opponents 27. When it came to shots on goal, the Terps had three more than their opponents, but actually made 11 less. The talent of the squad was there with players like Alyssa Porch, Alina Stahl, the Day Sisters, and Amanda Schaefer and more, but the execution was still lacking. The Terps haven't reached a winning record above 500 since joining the Big Ten. And guys, Nemzer preaches the importance of having a championship mindset, and even with almost a whole new team, they still just can't get the job done. Who knows what it will take to get this team back to where they once were. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kira. And Ben, Nemzer just has such an impact on this team, especially on the players. You just can't help but wonder how far she can take this team in the near future. Yeah, I think this team just really has to find their identity, lay those roots down, and just go from there. Now, don't go anywhere as Andrew and I head into Studio B where Kira was to play a quick game. Stick around. All right, well, we did our swap with Kira, and I don't know about you, Ben, but I'm pretty ready to play. Who's that Terp? Same here. I've been waiting all, all day. Let's go. Right. Let's see the first one pop Alrighty. up. Alrighty. I'm feeling calm. All right. Ooh. Not much to work with. That is. A really uh, tight I see shot. a two, and I'm gonna go ahead and get it before you do. I'm going Ava Morales. I see the bottom right of the two there. I hope it's a two. Be pretty embarrassing if not, but I'm gonna lock it in. Let's see. It's a good guess. There we go. One for one. All right. One for one. That's my turn. It's a point for me. Ooh. Okay, uh, I see a 1-8, I'm thinking Playing the numbers number game here. 18. Um, you know, with this one, I think I'm gonna go with a Kennedy Bell. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride that answer as well, I like it. All right, there we <sighs> two go. Two for two, baby. Two for two. Two for two. <sighs> Look at us. All right, next one. All right, it's an eight. It's an eight, but I'm hearing a good luck with this one. I feel like it's a trick question. Yeah. I'm feeling a high school soccer, someone in TSC. Okay. No, maybe not. I don't know. I'm lost, Ben. Know. Yeah. Um, could be maybe maybe a coach. I'm not 100 percent sure what number Megan Ryan Nemzer wore. I and, do uh, like a Megan uh, Ryan Nemzer at Rutgers. Rutgers. You know, I, that, I'm gonna go with that. Maybe a picture of her back in her playing. There's a red jersey. Go with, uh, yeah. Megan Ryan. It doesn't Nemzer. look like a Maryland red. <sighs> oh, there we go. On the someone, money. someone cool I'll us off right one. now. Someone that. cool us <laughs> off right now. All right, so All right. we just killed that. Who's that Terp? And uh, you know what time it is. It's time for our top flat plays of the season so far. Let's get it started. All right, let's get it going. 
So number five, we have Ava Morales, game-winning goal versus Binghamton. Look at the ball placement on that shot to win the game with eight minutes left. At number four, we got Liz Beardsley with the diving, goal, diving save against Ohio State. Here we go, here's the shot. Look at that extension to knock the ball away in slow motion. Great save. And we got some repetitiveness here, but Beardsley with a nice, another diving save. Look at the vertical she gets on that. Oh, who else but Liz Beardsley at number two. Another save. She's really been lighting it up on the highlight reel this year. Here's in slow motion, deflecting the ball off the side. And what do you know? Number one, another Liz Beardsley diving save. Ben, she just had one of those seasons this year. Wow, yeah, she's really been lighting it up for the Terps this year. She's really something special with a career high 50 saves this year. Something. Well, that will do it for today's edition of the Left Bench in Focus. Make sure to keep up with all of Terrapin Sports Central covers on X, Instagram, YouTube, and online at terrapinsportscentral.com. We'll see you next time.